ladies and gentlemen. I'm on the internet hanging out in digital fantasy land with the Jet Propulsion Lab at the California Institute of Technology. And I'm talking about how there are now 15,000 known near-Earth asteroids. So yeah, I guess this technically qualifies as a uh, Asteroid Fight Club video. So buckle up, strap in, and put on your helmet. Because as my grandmother always used to tell me when I was a wee little child, if they can ashify Twin Towers, they can ashify asteroids. Uh, wait a second. I misquoted her a little. Okay, let's get to the chase. T minus five, four, three, two, one. Hit the button, baby. Party dance time. Zero. Have ignition. This week at NASA. I'd like to go ahead and welcome uh, a new member to our team here. This is... Uh, well, golly gee whiz, we're all safe for now. The number of discovered near-Earth asteroids, or NIAs, now tops 15,000, with an average of 30 new discoveries added each week. The milestone marks a 50% increase in the number of known NIAs since 2013, when discoveries reached 10,000 of August in that year. Hey, wait a second. So, uh, hmm. It would sound like, from this data, we might have an issue of concern. Who knows, maybe if we have a giant asteroid that's heading towards Earth, we can just fling the James Webb Space Telescope at it and knock it off course. That is, if it doesn't happen before 2018, October. Surveys funded by NASA's Near-Earth Object Observations Program, EOS, include both asteroids and comets, account for more than 95% of discoveries so far. The 15,000th Near-Earth Asteroid is designated 2016, two buns, 57. It was discovered on October 13th by observers at the Mount Lemon Survey, an element of the NASA-funded Catalina Sky Survey in Tucson, Arizona. 2016, two buns, is a rather small asteroid, about 50 to 115 feet, meters in size. Yeah, but you get hit by that thing, that thing is made of rock and metal, solidified space monster drool. Yeah, well, I'm trying to say, I guess is. If you got hit by a 36-meter asteroid, you would definitely be going to the hospital or, or the grave. It will come closest to Earth on October 31st. But it's not special because it's going to hit us. It's special because it was number 15,000. That's special. A near-Earth asteroid is defined as one of those whose orbit periodically brings it within approximately 1.3 times Earth's average distance to the sun, or an astronomical unit. That is, within 121 million miles of the sun. I don't know if you knew this, but the Earth's average distance to the sun is about 93 million miles, 150 million kilometers. This distance also then brings the asteroid within roughly 30 million miles of Earth's orbit. Observers have already discovered more than 90% of the estimated population of large NEOs, which I was fine that, <laughs> you know, like that, that, that statistic is hilarious. Like we have absolutely no idea over no timeline scale of how many near-Earth objects there really are out there. Because if we're saying a million years, then imagine that we definitely have not found 90 to 95% of the large ones, you know? Like, how can you say? You don't even know how many there are. But like, the dude's like, oh, yeah, no, no, no. You guys chill out. We found 90% of all large estimated near-Earth objects in space. And you're like, okay, dude, how many are there? And they're like, oh, we don't know. But we're estimating 100% of the 90%. <laughs> you know? Okay. The rising rate of discovery is due to dedicated NEO surveys and upgraded telescopes coming online in recent years. Wait a second. What kind of shit is that? I don't know about that. PanStars became full-time operation in 2010. It was first launched in 2009, placed in hibernation in 2011, and then reactivated in 2013. Oh, that's, yeah, I guess. Yes, that's right. Good job, scientists. NASA is trying to tell you, yes, it's really cool and sciencey that we found 15,000 near-Earth asteroid discoveries by survey. But none of these are... They're not dangerous. They're gonna hurt you. Don't let people fear monger you and say, oh my god, asteroids gonna kill me. Incoming. Those 15,000 are floating safely around Earth. Like little goldfish. And, and I mean literal goldfish. Like they're supposedly filled with gold and platinum and iridium and all sorts of wonderful, wonderful space metals. Like you could technically take the asteroid belt and make your own planet out of it. <sighs> but you know, it's theoretically if like humanity were working together as a group to do awesome things as opposed to wasting all of its time all day on social media bitching about how one president is a total douchebag evil baby eater. Okay. Man, I'm getting back in the swing of things. You know, you gotta, you gotta bear with me. Or you don't. 
life and make choices. Hey, look, Amy Mainzer. Amy Mainzer is definitely in the Thor News Hall of Fame. One of our favorite scientists. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What have I done? I can't even find the article. I got way too much shit going on here. Okay, wait. Oh, man. This is not helping. The rising rate of discovery is due to dedicated NEO surveys and upgraded telescopes coming online in recent years. I doubted them. I guess it's true. Said NASA's NEO Observations Program Manager, Kelly Fast. But while we're making progress, we still have a long way to go. It is estimated by astronomers that only 27% of the NEAs that are 460 feet or 140 meters and larger have been found to date. And they got a failing grade from Congress two years ago. And Congress has told NASA, look, you better find 90% of objects in the size range and larger by the end of 2020 or we're going to be upset. And you don't want Congress upset with you. There are, I don't know, currently two NASA-funded NEO surveys, the Catalina Sky Survey and the Panoramic Survey, Telescope and Rapid Response System, Pan Stars in Hawaii, account for about 90% of the new NEO discoveries. Both projects upgraded their telescopes in 2015, improving their meal times. Wait, what? Improving their discovery rates. A recent upgrade to one of the Catalina Survey, Sky Survey telescopes, resulted in tripling its average monthly NEO discovery rate. Oh, this is cool, man. We don't need new telescopes. We can just upgrade the old ones. That's wonderful. The NEO Observations Program is a primary element of NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office, which is still not contacted me yet, by the way. If you want to get people interested and engaged, you got to be interesting and engaging. Something I'm good at. It's not always scientists. Strong point. Maybe I'll email them. Which is responsible for finding, tracking, and characterizing potentially hazardous NEOs, issuing warnings about possible impacts, and coordinating U.S. governments planning for a response to an actual impact threat. While no known NEO currently poses a risk of impact with the Earth over the next hundred years, says NASA Planetary Defense Officer Lindley Johnson, we found most of the larger asteroids, and we have a lot more of the smaller but still potentially hazardous ones to find. You guys sound kind of cocky. Like, yeah, we've already found most of them, man. We need, we don't need to be that worried. But we did just form a NASA Planetary Defense Office. So, mixed messages. What do you guys, Venus? You got two faces? Both tell me different things? No offense, Venus. Both of your faces are beautiful. But one is beautiful and it scares me. Um, all right. DC, Dwayne, and Lori. It's like, hey, y'all. I'm Thor, Thor News, and, uh... I would like to join the Planetary Defense Coordination Office thing. Do we have, do we get gang jackets and shit? Okay. All right, whatever. I'm, I'm learning how to make videos again, people. Bear with me or don't.